First up, a pair of presidents inserting themselves into two of the hottest topics of our time, race and the Me Too movement. As we mentioned yesterday, Bill Clinton stepped in it big time when he went on the Today Show with James Patterson as part of their book tour and was asked whether he feels any differently about the Monica Lewinsky scandal now 20 years later and in light of Me Too. No, I felt terrible then. And I came to grips with it. Did and you ever apologize no, to and no, Yes, and nobody believes that I got out of that for free. I left the White House $16 million in debt. This was litigated 20 years ago. Two-thirds of the American people sided with me. They were not insensitive to that. Do you I, feel I like you owe her an apology? No, I do. I, I, I do not. I have never talked to her. But I did say publicly on more than one occasion that I was sorry. That's very different. The apology was public. Not exactly a winning performance. So last night at another event, Clinton attempted to clarify just what he meant, saying he did, in fact, apologize to Lewinsky. The truth is, the hubbub was I got hot under the collar because of the way the questions were asked. I support the Me Too movement, and I think it's long overdue. And I have always tried to support it in the decisions and policies that I've advanced. Clearly. But apparently uncomfortable with another president at the center of attention, our current commander-in-chief felt he had to jump right on in there, reigniting his battle with the NFL, particularly its black players, formerly rescinding an invitation to the Philadelphia Eagles, who were supposed to celebrate their Super Bowl victory today at the White House. Trump released a statement last night which read in part, the Philadelphia Eagles are unable to come to the White House with their full team to be celebrated tomorrow. They disagree with their president because he insists they proudly stand for the national anthem. The Eagles wanted to send a smaller delegation, but the thousand fans planning to attend the event deserve better. So in lieu of hosting the Eagles, where only five of them were expected to show, the White House held a ceremony today to, as the president put it, honor our great country, along with the U.S. Marine Band and U.S. Army Chorus. Okay, so maybe you forgot the words. Joining me now are my Boston Public Radio co-host and Boston Globe columnist, Marjorie Egan. Hi, Marjorie. Hello, Jim. It's been a long time. Freelance journalist, Joanna Weiss. Hey to you, Joanna. Former state treasurer and Trump supporter, Joe Malone. Joe, good to see you. Nice to see Let's you. Let's go this way quickly. What was your reaction to Bill Clinton's performance? Uh, it was kind of his Roger Mudd moment. Uh, if you remember Ted Kennedy uh, back when he was about to announce in 1980. The president. Yeah, goes, thinks he's going to get a softball interview, and he gets hit between the eyes on Chappaquiddick. Similarly, he was caught totally off balance. And you know what? I think it's great on behalf of the journalist part that he put, them, it's put some heat on him. He sure sh shouldn't have been surprised that the question was coming at this time. That right? was what was surprising to me. I mean, you know, yes, he managed to kind of skirt through the election without having to answer this question, so I guess it gave him some confidence, but that was before the Me Too era and Harvey Weinstein and all of this is out in the open, and to, to anticipate, to not anticipate that question is crazy. You were borderline apoplectic. Is that a fair uh, characterization? Well, Bill Clinton is a smart guy. Not only was he not prepared for the question, but he started saying such ridiculous things like, well, I hired a lot of women back in Arkansas, and I put a sexual harassment place back, uh, policy in practice back in Arkansas, and you say to yourself, well, you sure as hell didn't follow your own own policies. I mean, you were going after everything that moved. So he seems to have learned nothing. And it says something, I think, about the narcissism that he shares with the president occupant of the White House. Well, you know, in midterm elections in the past, he's been probably in as big a demand as practically anybody. Last night, Catherine Clark was here, a congresswoman who is also the co-chair of something called Red to Blue, part of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, which is trying to turn the House Democratic. And I asked her this question. So would you want him? Uh, you know, I I would have to think about it. Would should a Democrat want him? It seems to me he's pretty toxic right now. You know, he was never a very good vessel for this argument. And I think that's one problem that Hillary Clinton had was mm -hmm. that they couldn't really make the forceful argument against you know Donald Trump and, and his behavior toward women without dredging up that whole past. Now again. Ground rules have changed. This is all fodder for conversation. If, and they, ch if they change enough, I mean, he's still, you know, it wasn't that long ago, admittedly prior to Me Too, that nobody could move a crowd, the, a Democratic crowd, a working class crowd, the kind of people 
who elected Donald Trump in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and those kind of places. Is he too hot to handle right now? Well, it's twofold. Number one, the Me Too movement. And number two, when you're out, you're out. The Clintons now, their stock has dropped. They're no longer the future. They're the past. And in politics, you go from peacock to feather duster pretty quickly. How dangerous is he for a demo? I mean, Catherine Clark, I asked her several times yeah. last night. She does have an opponent. I should have made clear. Yeah, I, I think that if you have Bill Clinton come campaign for you, you are saying that it is fine to have been not only accused of sexual harassment, but credibly accused of raping somebody. And, uh, Juanita Broderick. Juanita and Broderick, who had a very compelling case back in the 90s. You know, I won't ask this of Marjorie because she admits she suffers from Trump derangement syndrome, so maybe I'll get back to you in a second. And when I'm listening to him, I listened several times to what he said in that interview, the parallels to the people who Clinton supporters hate Donald Trump is stunning. It's fake news for Donald Trump. It's imagined facts for this guy. Dana Milbank made this point in the Washington Post. Uh, uh, I'm defending the Constitution. He attacks the press. He's acting like a victim, very much like your guy, Donald Trump, does in these kinds of I mean, that's not an unfair parallel to Bill Clinton, is it, it? It's not, and it's a problem, again, that the Democrats have had for a long time and have not had to cope with, and now they finally do. And again, you know, the, his another one of Bill Clinton's defenses was, well, what about John F. Kennedy? You know, it's true. You know, Me Too has sort of pulled the rug out from a bunch of other people and has sort of laid bare some behavior that was tolerated or looked aside. It's just no longer the case. You know, I, I, virtually every Republican Twitter account I went to today was gleeful. I mean, an exultation. And to a variation, I just asked Joanna, it, it's like a, a mirror image uh, of your guy. The difference is when Bill Clinton was elected, it was after he denied having an affair with Jennifer Flowers, not assaulting someone. Your guy was accused of assaulting people, admitted he assaulted people on that Access Hollywood thing. There was no reckoning for him, was there? Well, as Clinton pointed out, he says, you know, that, oh, his base is still with him. Um, he basically said, I still had, you know, popularity when I left. Politicians down in Washington, they're looking at polls, and that's what it's all about. And, and their egos get way out of hand, you know. And they're, they're, uh... But if Bill Clinton deserves a reckoning, which I think you think he does, does Donald Trump not deserve a reckoning on steroids by I mean, comparison? for 500 straight days, he's getting his reckoning. I mean, that, he's not fit to be president among those who are his opponents, and so they torture him every day. You but know, I think, you know... Donald Trump was accused by four teenage girls that were running in this beauty pageant of how he came in and was watching them change their clothes. It's just sickening. And it's incredible that he gets away with this like he gets away with everything else. And we're, there's almost 15 other women that accuse him of other gross stuff. He just but By states, the way, the voters knew every single thing you're saying, and they said that was okay. What does that say to you? That's not what they said. What did they say? They said, we don't believe it. This was before Me Too, too. We had people call our radio show and said, oh, well, those complaints aren't true. If those were true, they should have come out at the time. We don't believe that stuff. I don't think they believe. Well, maybe they believe it now, but um, I... He still it, has 87% like yeah, sure, approval sure. in the Republican Party. Joanna. I think Joe nailed it. The Trump base does not, you know, maybe does believe it and doesn't care. And the, the problem for Bill Clinton is the Democratic base can't with any credibility. I mean, this is people who are waving the, the you know, the, the gender equity, the gender equality banner. They can't with any credibility, you know, without looking like complete hypocrites. Criticize Trump criticize, if they're not willing to yeah. criticize their own in this yeah. case. Can we move Jim, I would yeah, just quickly. add, what happened to that congressional uh, slush fund, which was paying off women who were uh, accosted by their bosses in Congress to go away, sign an NDA that they wouldn't talk about it? That was supposed to be a big uproar. Remember that? It just got buried, didn't it? No, you I, know, don't can, I don't remember it. You don't remember that? No. Uh, do you remember what I'm talking a about? A little bit. Can yeah. we move on to from 42 to 45? Five. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there any reason at all that Donald Trump canceled the Eagles' appearance other than to stoke the racial division that he has worked, I think one would acknowledge, pretty hard to, to so, expand so, in this so I'm country? I'm not defending the way he made it a big, into a big thing. What but, did he do it for? But he, he basically threw a party, invited everybody, and they said, 80 people are coming, and oh, can we change the date? Now it's only going to be 10 people. So he was like, a, you buying he, that story? No, I'm saying this is the. No, that's, the, that's their story, oh. that he was blindsided. I mean, so he canceled say, so, the Warriors, uh, same sort of situation. Majority black players, I should say. Steph Curry, the star, said, I'm not coming. And that they had a team meeting. Should we go? Shouldn't we go? But let me just, just say this. 
he does himself a disservice because right now he's got some good things to talk about. And this ends up blowing out of the water. His uh, good jobs report from last but week. But this is what he wants to talk about, isn't it? Because well, his base loves this. He's stoking his base. I mean, I think that there is something to the idea that this is a small man's ego talking and that he does take personal offense. And this is the kind of thing that is personally important But they didn't kneel him. during the whole mm -hmm. regular season last year. Well, there was the fist up in Zero. The but and yeah, the crowds the eat this up. His, his rally crowd eat it up. Why do you think he did this? Because he loves to stoke the racial divide in the United States of America. He can't even bear to say that Roseanne Barr said something racist. I think the president, I know I have Trump derangement syndrome, Jim, yeah. but I think he is uh, rather racist in his behavior. We also have Fox News derangement syndrome, and this will please you. You saw that Fox News, to demonstrate that the Eagles had knelt uh, uh, in protest during the season, put up a photograph, and it turns out it wasn't about kneeling, it was praying, and Fox <laughs> News had to apologize. Because well, I want to play something for you and get your reaction. Here's Sarah Huckabee Sanders explaining, uh, when I asked the question, what's the difference between the Baker, obviously in Colorado, yeah. the Baker's right to protest, and that of NFL players. Here's what she says. The president doesn't think that this is an issue simply of free speech. He thinks it's about respecting uh, the men and women of our military. It's about respecting our national anthem. And it's about standing out of pride for them. Okay, let me read that again. It's about respecting the men and women of our military. That's what Donald Trump thinks. The same guy who said this in 2015. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Has nothing to do with respect. If he respected the military, would he criticize a man who virtually every Democrat and Republican thinks so, so is a I, is I, a national I, I, patriot? I agree with you here? that he senses this is a winning issue for him, and he, he it's a wedge that because he it's benefits black players. By. It's not just because I, I it's think players. It's, I think it's, it's black patriotism players. versus millionaire athletes who aren't uh, respecting the flag, and he thinks that's a win. You're shaking your head. <laughs> Well, where to begin? I mean, millionaire <laughs> athletes, billionaire NFL owners, like who, you know, the, the, who's, who's the sympathetic person here? Um, and, uh, you know... <laughs> I'm laughing only because I'm looking at Marjorie, and I think her head's going to... Go ahead. It's got nothing to do with patriotism, and Donald Trump knows it's got nothing to do with patriotism. It's got to do with the fact that young African-American men, like the guy from the Milwaukee Bucks, who is an NBA player, Sterling Brown. gets pulled over, tased for parking illegally, and when they're not in their NFL uniforms... Well, the same day that the NFL announced their yeah, policy. it's got to do with the fact that if you are an African-American mother in the United States, you're going to worry every time your teenage son goes out of the house, what? and Donald Trump is stoking those fears and making it but, seem But, but Obama okay. stoked similar uh, fears on the opposite he side did? of the spectrum. How? Absolutely. How so? Because when, when Skip uh, Gates, uh, there's a, uh, I don't know the facts of the Cambridge police, but they, they acted Even like... Even if that's true, was that a pattern of behavior? Oh, yeah, the part of abs he did it all the time okay. between him and his attorney I mean like when general? he said it, I could have uh, uh, Trayvon Martin could have been my son that's stoking racial division well first of all the, the showing the, empathy the, the, the isn't perpetrator it? of that crime wasn't a white person mm -hmm. but he made him into a white person there were a lot of times when identity politics whether it's the Clintons or mm -hmm. Obama they did what was best for them politically you get the last 15 seconds then we really got to go um, if there's anyone who's bringing uh, disrespect to the institutions of this country Country. It's the guy who's tweeting all kinds of racist and sexist we things at six in the morning. Marjorie, see you tomorrow. You'll be Bye. okay by tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to recover. See tough you, to recover. Thank you so much Take for your time. Pleasure. Joanna, thank you.